In this lecture, we're going to talk about moles. And we're going to use the term mole to quickly measure a quantity of something, namely atoms and molecules, but you can use it for anything, by grouping that item, by finding the mass of the item, or by looking at its volume. And then you can convert between the moles of the item and the mass and the quantity. So what is a mole? This is not the mole we're talking about. This is the mole you'll find in your garden. Also could be Mole Man if you have uh, Marvel superheroes in your garden, or possibly even a Mole Crab if you live at the beach because they are also a kind of a mole. No, that's not what we're talking about this week. No, that's also not what we're talking about this week. And no, we're not even talking about Mole, that delicious dish. We're talking about this. This is a mole. A mole is a really big number. It's like a trillion trillion. So it is for counting things um, in chemistry because molecules and atoms are very, 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 very small. So in any sample that we would be likely to use in the lab, such as even one teaspoon of water or one milliliter or um, one gram, it's going to have millions and trillions of molecules and atoms within it. So we have to use this really big number, um, which we can abbreviate, luckily, because we know about scientific notation. We can put it as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and not write all those zeros. But it's going to help us make our calculations easy. Trust me, it will. So let's pretend that we are pirates and we need to count something really quickly. So imagine we have a hidden treasure and uh, we need to count out 1,000 gold coins from our treasure. How can we count them very quickly? Well, you could have all of your, your, your mateys uh, count them really quick or you could do it in an organized way and you could put them in groups. So you can make piles of coins such as piles of 10. And if you had piles of 10, knowing your math, you can get 1,000 coins and then you could say, well, if each one pile has 10 coins, then my coins will cancel mathematically and you will only need 100 piles. So that would be easy. You could also use a balance and find the mass of the coins. So if one coin has a mass of 2 grams and you're a smart pirate, you could say 1,000 coins at 2 grams per coin means you need 2,000 grams of coins. And you could take out your trusty balance that all pirate ships naturally have and you could measure out that mass of coins. You could also do it by volume. If you were really bored and you figured out that one of your beautiful golden goblets you got from a treasure raid um, could hold 20 goblets or could hold 20 coins, then you could say, well, 1,000 coins at one goblet holding 20 coins apiece means you need 50 goblets worth. So all of these would be faster. But wait, won't that be less accurate, you're thinking? Well, not necessarily. When you are gathering coins or any kind of item by mass or by volume, it might be less accurate unless the amount of coins you have to count is too large to really count by hand, like it would take forever, or you'd fall asleep halfway and lose count. Like if you were counting out 2 billion coins, that would take too long. Or what if the size of the coins you had to count out was too small to count by hand? Like if you had to count out grains of rice or atoms or moles or molecules. So atoms and molecules obviously are too small for us to count by hand even if we had a microscope. So chemists use mass or volume or groups of atoms and molecules to count them more easily. And um, also, as I had mentioned earlier, the number of atoms and molecules you would need to count is much too large to count. So for example, one cup of water, 8 ounces, has 8 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. So to make it easier to count, chemists are going to organize them into groups, and the group we use is called a mole. A chemistry mole is a group of atoms that has that really big number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, or you could write it out. That's how many items there are. You could have a mole of donuts or a mole of rice, but we usually use the mole to refer to chemistry things like atoms and molecules. So what this means is one mole of hydrogen atoms is going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. One mole of water molecules is going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Only half of a mole would have half of that number, or 3.011 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. 
So where does this number come from? It's called Avogadro's number, not avocado, but if that's the best you can remember is avocado, I'll know what you're talking about. Avogadro's number is the number of items in one mole. This is Avogadro. This isn't really Avogadro, but these are some memes that people came up with. So Amadeo Avogadro, back in the day, a long time ago, he came up with this number based on the mass of carbon and how many atoms of carbon he calculated would be in 12 grams of carbon. So this is kind of, this isn't a new term. So the idea of using a mole as a counting number is not something new. We do this all the time. We talk about a dozen donuts, a dozen bagels, and a dozen always means 12. You use the number pi, you're very familiar with that in math, and it always means 3.14. A mole is the same thing, it just always means a bigger number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I know some of you are out there saying, no, pi has more numbers. Okay, so here is the first, like, 100 numbers in pi, that is true, but Avogadro's number also has more numbers. It's just commonly abbreviated as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, just like pi is e extremely acceptable for pi to just be abbreviated as 3.14. Most people would agree. To go back to our analogy of counting coins for a pirate, we can count them by groups as counting them into groups of moles. We could also count them in volume and mass. So how would we do that with atoms and molecules? Well, we know that the volume of one mole of atoms or molecules is called the molar volume. And so this depends on if it's a solid, liquid, or gas. The molar volume of a gas is 22.4 liters no matter what type of gas it is. And that's because all gases, as a rule, expand to take the shape and size of their container. The molar volume of a solid or liquid we can't calculate because it depends on its density. So we will learn to calculate that later on in another unit when we talk about molarity, but we'll, um, we'll just focus on the gas for this chapter. If we wanted to find the number of items by using their mass, we would use the molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of atoms or one mole of molecules. And this depends on the identity of the atoms or the molecules. For example, the molar mass of hydrogen is going to be 1.01 grams per mole. The molar mass of oxygen atoms is 16.00 grams per mole. Those numbers should look very familiar from the periodic table. The molar mass of H2O is 18.02 grams per mole because we have two of our hydrogens at 1.01 each and one oxygen and when you add those together you get 18.02. So what that also means is that one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams. Or we could also say 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water, which is one mole of water, is equal to 18.02 grams. So we can convert between groupings as a mole and the mass and the volume by knowing these conversion factors. So how do we calculate molar mass? As we did with the water, you're basically just adding the mass of every component. So for example, the molar mass of CH4. CH4 is made of one carbon with four hydrogens attached. And if the mass of carbon is 12.01 according to the periodic table, the mass of hydrogen is 1.008, or we round it to 1.01, .01, then with rounding, the mass of one mole of CH4 is 16.04 grams because that's one carbon and four hydrogens. So we would say the molar mass is 16.04 grams per mole. So if the molar mass of the substance depends on what the substance is, as you can see, the different um, um, one mole of each substance, such as sucrose, is very different in size than one mole of copper. And that also has to do with the mass of them. So a sucrose molecule is very large compared to a copper atom. So the sizes of them are going to be different volumes. The mass is also going to weigh different because sucrose has a different molar mass than copper, for example, or of sulfur atoms or sodium chloride that's table salt. So the sizes of a mole, the volume of a mole, and the mass of one mole is going to be different, as you can see in this picture. And all of these pictures, all six samples here, this represents one mole of each of these. 
So we can use Avogadro's number, molar mass and molar volume, to convert between the mass and the volume and the number of individual atoms. Um, you just need to be familiar with these conversion factors. So as we've already gone through, one mole is Avogadro's number worth of items. And usually the items we'll refer to in chemistry class are atoms or molecules, but feel free to calculate one mole of donuts or one mole of bagels. Molar mass conversion factor is one mole is the molar mass in grams from the periodic table. And then finally the molar mass, or I'm sorry, molar volume, we'll just work on gas this time, so we'll say one mole is 22.4 liters. So let's go through an example. How many atoms of neon are in two moles of neon gas? Well, we can think about this logically, and we can figure out that one mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We already know that. So two moles must be twice that amount. So you just take 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, move your decimal appropriately, and you would get this answer. But I want to introduce a different way of looking at this by using a math technique called dimensional analysis. And this problem is so easy, you wouldn't really need to use this technique, but practicing this technique on a very easy example will make it um, much easier for you when we come to much more difficult examples. So in dimensional analysis, you're going to start with whatever number you are given in the problem, and we were given two moles of neon. So two moles of neon, and just to make it a fraction, we're going to put it over one. And then we're going to multiply that by whichever relevant conversion factor, would help us get to the number that we want. So we want to know how many atoms. Luckily we know that there is Avogadro's number worth of atoms in a mole. So we're going to turn that equality or that conversion factor into a fraction and we're going to put the one mole on the bottom because anything such as a mole divided by itself will cancel out. So once we cancel out any words or numbers that we have in common, what we have is 2, left over from the 2 moles, times Avogadro's number, and we still have the word atoms left, over 1 times 1, and the word mole canceled out so we can just get rid of the mole. And anything divided by 1 is just itself, so we can get rid of the 1's. And when we multiply this out, and we move the decimal appropriately, we get the same answer that we got using this logically. Let's try a more complicated one. How many moles would 3.011 times 10 to the 23rd molecules be? We know that again that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, so logically you could figure out that this is half, but let's practice dimensional analysis. Whatever you are given in the problem, let's write that down first, including its label. It's very important to label this. To make it a fraction, we'll put it over one. And we want to know how many molecules, so we're going to put in Avogadro's number worth of molecules per mole. And we're going to put the molecules on the bottom this time because we want our molecules divided by molecules to cancel. This is nice because we can also cancel the 1's. We can also cancel the 10 to the 23. And we're left with much less. We're, all we're left with is the 3.011 mole over 6.022, which is half. What is the mass in grams of 2 moles? Now this is a little trickier. Anytime you see mass, you know we need to figure out molar mass first. So in order to go between the moles and grams, we need to figure out how many grams per mole water is. Well, as we'd already done in the previous slides, we know that water is 18.02. So we're going to take what we're given in the problem, which is two moles, and we'll write it first, put it over one to make it a fraction, and then we'll multiply that by our grams per mole. We'll put moles on the bottom, so that way mole divided by mole cancels and our water divided by water cancels, and we're left with 2 times 18.02 over the 1's, which anything over 1 is itself, and we get 36.04 grams. And if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause and go back. We can do this again with volume, knowing that the volume of a gas is 22.4, so again we're going to put our 1 mole on the bottom. The 2 moles we got in the problem, we're going to put on top at the beginning, and we can cancel to find out the number of liters. But let's try one that's a little trickier and requires three different factors. What if we want to know the mass, meaning we need to know molar mass, of this many molecules? So we put that number of molecules first because that's what we're given. Then we need to use two conversion factors. We need to figure out how many moles this is, so let's use moles and molecules. 
And then we need to figure out the grams when we already know it's 18.02 because we figured that out in the previous problem. And we're going to set this up.